Okay, welcome back everybody to my second video on modular arithmetic. Last time I told you we were going to take a look at this equation, but first I wanted to look at another example that is a little bit simpler to help us understand. So let's consider the, the congruence, 3x is congruent to 1 mod 5. Um, last time you may recall we talked about uh, z5, the set of remainders mod 5. Uh, would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, all the numbers greater than or equal to 0 and less than 5. Well, this isn't that many remainders, so we can just go through each one and check times 3, and we see that 3 times 2 is equal to 6, which is congruent to 1 mod 5. So therefore, x equals 2 satisfies our equation. Um, I wanted to give you a way to visualize this so that we can uh, think about these congruences as they get harder. So imagine a number line broken into segments of length five. At the start of each segment, we reset to zero in the modulus five world, because every uh, multiple of five is congruent to zero mod five. Now, take an arrow of length three. Solving this congruence is the same question as asking, how many three arrows until we get to a one in the modulus five world? In this way, we can see that two arrows work because two threes is six, which is congruent to one. But actually, there are infinitely many solutions. We can add any number of five arrows to our solution and still be at a one. Therefore, every solution to this congruence is of the form 5p plus 2 for some integer p. Okay, so let's look at a little bit harder equation. Here we have 4x is congruent to 6 mod 7. Now we could go through and test every remainder, but let's think about it more critically. So if we just had 4x equals 6, then I'm pretty sure you all would just multiply by 1 fourth and get x equals 3 halves. Well, the reason we're able to do this is because 1 fourth is the inverse of 4. So anytime you have an inverse in math, the inverse undoes. It's effectively doing nothing if you do um, a pro um, an action and then the inverse of that action. So in multiplication, we see a times a inverse times x equals x, or 1 times x. So therefore, a times a inverse equals 1. In mod, we say something very similar. We say a times a inverse is congruent to 1 mod m because multiplying anything in the modulus world times something which is congruent to 1 is effectively doing nothing. So here we can see that to solve our congruence we just need to multiply both sides times 4 inverse. Okay, so to find 4 inverse we can uh, use the definition of it. So 4 times x x being 4 inverse is congruent to 1 mod 7. Um, so let's go through and test each of the remainders in z7, which are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And going through each one, we see 4 times 2 equals 8, which is then congruent to 1 mod 7. So therefore, 4 inverse is 2. So we can go back to our original congruence and multiply each side by 2. And then we have 8x is congruent to 12 mod 7, so therefore x is congruent to 5 mod 7. Okay, so now we can finally look at our little congruence. 2x is congruent to 1 mod 4. We know that x must be the inverse of 2 in modulus 4, and we only have four options, so let's go ahead and find which one it is. So 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, congruent to 0, 2 times 3 is 6, congruent to... Wait, what happened? <laughs> Shouldn't there be an inverse in modulus 4? We've tested all the options. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this visually to try to get a better understanding. So here we have our number line 
divided into segments of length four. And here's our little two arrow, and we're gonna start at zero and stack these on top of each other. And we see that after two, two arrows, we've completely filled an interval. Um, so we're back to zero, modulus four. Um, that means that two arrows can only ever reach zero or two in modulus four. So we can't actually ever reach one using two arrows in mod four. Um, therefore, two does not have an inverse in modulus four. Uh, let's look at some more examples to understand why this is. Um, so let's look at 4x is congruent to 1 mod 6. Um, here we have our, our number line split into intervals of length 6. And then we have our 4 arrow. And we see by stacking these 4 arrows on top of each other that after 3, we've gone back to the beginning. So we've gone back to 0 mod 6. Um, so therefore, our 4 arrows can only ever land on four, two, or zero in modulus six. Um, we can get a better picture of this by dividing our four arrow into two, two arrows. So um, then we see that after three, two arrows, we've completely filled an interval. So it takes one and a half, four arrows to fill an interval of six. Um, okay, one more example to get a better handle on this. So if we have 5x is congruent to 1 mod 6, we see that after 5, 5 arrows, we have 25, which is congruent to 1 mod 6. So 5 does have an inverse in z6. Um, question is, why is that? Well, we can see that we can divide our 5 arrow into uh, arrows of length 1, so 1 arrows and it takes six of these to fill an interval of length six. Now that we've looked at lots of examples, let's try to see a pattern. We have five x is congruent to one mod six, four x is congruent to one mod six, and two x is congruent to one mod six. And we know that the first two did not work, so two x and four x, but five x worked. So, question is, what is the pattern? So in general, if we're looking for a solution to the congruence ax is congruent to 1 mod m, so uh, we're looking for an inverse of a and zm, a solution only exists if a and m are co-prime. And you may have never heard this word before, but it just means that a and m share no common factors. So uh, a and M don't have to be prime themselves, uh, it's just that their only common factor is 1. So for instance, 4 and 5 are coprime, even though 4 is not a prime number. And uh, maybe a better explanation for why this congruence has no solutions for you is that from last time we know that 2x minus 1 is congruent to 0 because um, 2x minus 1 must be divisible by 4. So therefore in normal uh, arithmetic land 2x minus 1 equals 4y for some integer y. Um, doing some algebra we can see that then 2x minus 4y equals 1 and therefore 2 times x minus 2y equals 1 and this implies that x minus 2y equals 1 half. Well, this is impossible because we assumed that x and y were integers at the beginning. So if you take a linear combination of any integers, you, you can't get a fraction. Uh, so therefore, no x satisfies this congruence. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, we're not always going to have nice small numbers, so how do we find an inverse if we can't test all of the possible remainders? 
Well, you're completely right. If we had something like Cephin X is congruent to 1 mod 121, there are literally 121 possible options for X. So that's way too many to test. Um, well, there is a method for solving congruences like this, and it's called the Euclidean algorithm. You may have heard the name before, you may have no idea what it actually is. Well, it's a really cool um, uh, method for solving congruences like this, and we're going to go over it next time. So you all can look forward to, to that. Uh, thanks everybody for watching this video. I hope that you're getting more and more excited about uh, modular arithmetic. And so make sure to come back next time.